Yeah, uh, I think we can start anyway. Uh, we've been waiting for almost five minutes, actually five minutes. So maybe they will. All right, I think they're joining. Maybe they will listen to the record. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I think we can start our check-in. It's Monday. Uh, welcome to week seven. Yeah, we have made it to the half of the program. Congratulations, guys. It's amazing. For me, the feeling is really good. Like, I'm feeling nice. You know, we're almost there. Yeah, so uh, let's share maybe if there's any challenge so far, if there's maybe a question or anything maybe you'd love to, to, to say. Uh, you can also share how looking at... Uh, I'm looking forward for this week. Anything, then we wrap up. I think uh, we won't stay for long since you're not that many people yeah. So let me just hand on the mic to you guys. I, I think we have a presentation. Oh, yeah. Today we have a presentation. Sorry for that. I almost forgot. Yeah. Today we have a presentation. Then after presentation, maybe going through the agenda, community building session. Then we have tutorial, introduction, challenge for week seven. Then uh, we have. Uh, tutorial to web scripting using Python and Telegram scripting. Then we'll be having independent challenge work. Yeah, I almost forgot we have a presentation today, so I will hand the mic to you. And yeah, maybe Aaron graduate, and then yeah, maybe I will be back for announcement. Thank you. Anyone willing to start, maybe? Okay, look, can I be heard? Anyone who's willing to to go first? Okay, Abram, you, you can go. All right. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, let me share my my screen. Mm. Can you can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, the last week challenge uh, uh, was to 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 build uh, a model for uh, for for uh, categorizing high high risk and uh, low risk uh, uh, customers. And also to calculate the 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 credit score for each uh, customer and the the risk probability of each customer uh, and uh, also uh, some loan uh, related uh, parameters. Uh, so to do this uh, this task the the first step we were recommended to to do was the EDA analysis to get uh, insight about uh, the given data. So I have performed the EDA analysis on the data set. The data sets, uh, uh, the provided data sets was uh, on, on 90, 95,000 uh, around that uh, entries. Uh, it also have uh, 16 uh, columns from uh, those 60 columns. Uh, as you see on the screen here, uh, these 12 columns uh, were identified as categorical columns and uh, uh, only two uh, columns, amount and value, were uh, detected as uh, any numerical columns. And also the data set contain one uh, date uh, date column. The data set contain uh, uh, 
uh, a data from November uh, 2018 uh, to February 2019. Uh, and then I, I did some summary analysis here. I tried to visualize the numerical data here and also basic EDA analysis for uh, for for uh, yeah categorical data too and then i did uh, i'm going to pass this uh, quickly uh, because the focus here is uh, on the modeling uh, related tasks so i will get back to it uh, i did the correlation analysis uh, and yeah uh, high uh, high correlation uh, yeah between amount and uh, yeah in the challenge document uh, there was a task to do uh, a correlation analysis between amount and uh, value uh, since uh, these uh, elements are highly related uh, 0 0.98 correlation uh, was uh, found uh, after calcul calculating it uh, I have uh, and then some data quality assessment. Uh, the data uh, not uh, the data doesn't have any missing value, which is good. But uh, uh, as you see here, some of the values here, um, uh, these values indicate uh, possible outliers in the in the data set. So I have uh, detected uh civil uh, outlier in the amount uh, and the uh, value column here some some uh, values are extremely high from uh, from the others uh, and then uh, i i moved to the to the modeling part so to to calculate i mean to classify the customers into higher risk and uh, low risk uh, the the data should be uh, transformed and uh, uh, these futures uh, should be uh, calculated from uh, the given data set so uh, this uh, recency frequency monetary and uh, stability uh, are uh, some useful uh, uh, futures for uh, classifying the customers into high risk and low risk also for calculating the credit score model so uh, the next step i did was to uh, to calculate and uh, uh, get a new data data frame uh, from the old uh, data uh, so i calculated these four values for each for each customer uh, and then after that i did a correlation uh, analysis between these uh, four variables uh, and from this uh, correlation analysis uh, Mo momentary uh, monetary and uh, stability shows uh, high relationship more monetary means it's the amount of uh, yeah money the user i think spend and the stability stability indicates the frequency of the, of the purchase yeah the consistency of the transaction over time so these two uh, are highly related and also uh, not as much as uh, these two but uh, there was uh, some kind of medium uh, correlation was detected between frequency and uh, momentary uh, monetary monetary, uh, monetary yeah. okay uh, then uh, i i did uh, uh, customer risk uh, classification using uh, KMAP, uh, using uh, two, two clusters. So I try to categorize the, the 
the customer the total customers found from the data sets were uh, here uh, 3842 uh, then after i classify the customer into high risk and uh, low risk only three three of uh, the customers were identified as low risk and most of the customer are categorized under high high risk uh, this may be due to uh, due to this uh, outlier uh, outlier uh, values from uh, from the data set because i didn't have time to uh, to handle this these outliers so i just uh, used them into the simply use them into the classification model uh, then i calculated uh, weight of evidence uh, and information value uh, and i have identified stability and uh, monetary uh, has high predictive uh, power and uh, next to that frequency has high predictive uh, power uh, and then i i try to uh, train uh, uh, a random forest classifier model uh, to to make a, a, a prediction uh, for a new customer whether this customer is uh, high risk or uh, low risk so i i try to train that and uh, i get this these values for random forest classifier and for logistic uh, regression i get these values as you see here uh, these values are very suspicious uh, and uh, i don't think uh, they are correct especially uh, this one it says the model uh, works perfectly but i don't think uh, it does uh, because since i this this may be happened due to due to the i missed the step to handle the outliers uh, that's why i get i think uh, this weird result and after after i i actually there is no need to to do the hyper parameter tuning because th these values are wrong but i just uh, did them um, the hyper parameter tuning and uh, somehow the result uh, also it uh, it doesn't make sense so uh, the potential issues i i have uh, identified is the imbalance uh, classes in my data set because uh, i have only three customers identified as low risk uh so the the remaining are high risk so this is uh, imbalanced so uh, this is why the the model is not uh, uh, working uh, correctly and uh, for the future in the task uh, we, uh, we were expected to do uh, some prediction about the uh, loan amount and uh, the long duration but uh, there were no any given data about some some historical data about uh, the loan amount for each customer and the duration should be uh, provided because uh, without that data uh, i don't think we should be able to do this this uh, prediction uh, and also the, for the future work uh, again uh, yeah, the model performance should be improved by addressing the uh, outliers. Again, this, uh, this, these two are my my future work recommendation. Uh, I think yeah, this is it. If you have a question, uh, you can ask me. Um, Abraham, so yeah, first I would like to say really thank you since you're one of the person who is who will be here and present every week. 
So maybe uh, so my first question will be: You were supposed, according to the document, you were supposed to differentiate the, some proxy variable, right, in order to class to put the people as as a bad or good uh, to give them bad or good credit score, right? So when have you done the step? Is that after the RFMS, uh, after analyzing the RFMS and things like that? Because I saw that you have made some correlational analysis between the variables that are already on the data, like between amount and value, right? So what was the need to do the correlational analysis between the data? And when were, when have you done this step? Uh, okay, you're right. Uh, I have uh, this, uh, uh, this proxy uh, values. Uh, for uh, for for each uh, for each variable, so uh, actually I didn't include it. Uh, I forget to include it in the in the report. You're right. This is important. So uh, the mod, uh, the classification uh, is uh, performed based on uh, based on that uh, for for values uh, above uh, above that the model will consider them as uh, higher risk and for for another values uh, indicated in the I included I included it in the code but I forget uh, to include it in on the report but I get uh, four values uh, for uh, indicating high risk uh, and uh, four other values for uh, for low risk uh, customer, the four values is for each uh, variables uh, in the RFMS uh, matrix. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, another maybe uh, you, we have got an evaluation result that that doesn't seem precise or correct, right? So behind uh, maybe uh, you just say that uh, you you haven't corrected the outliers of the data maybe can you mention or is there any errors like is there any cause that you think is the the cause of this problem because i like if if it is because of the outliers we might have the uh, an evaluation or a result that would be uh, that would have maximum errors or you know not precise like it's one yeah the first one is for the logistic regression it's one 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 and what do you think uh, the the reason would be behind the having some outliers in the data mm, maybe uh, maybe the uh, the data i used uh, for uh, for uh, validation test and uh, you know training maybe uh, there were some issues in there or uh, the outlier issue or again, maybe I think yeah. Uh, the, maybe the, the, the I have made some issues while scaling uh, the data. I guess maybe this uh, this uh, this can be the possible uh, issues. This is are so far uh, I have in mind, but I didn't tested them. All uh, you know to actually understand what caused this uh, this issue. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I don't think so. That I, uh, me too. I don't even think that the the problem of having an outlier on the data only will bring this much uh, error or you know difference on the evaluation. So uh, okay, I am done. Maybe yeah, yeah, Nati, if you have some questions. Okay. Um, maybe can I go, Abraham, one more time? Like, can we go? To, can we go to the last page? And I have seen that you have put two recommendations for future recommendation, right? What well, was one of them? But call it. We were expected to do some uh, prediction about the loan amount and the duration, but uh, in the in the data set provided, uh, there were no uh, information related to 
you know this uh, loan amount and the duration for uh, for customers so uh, if we don't have this information uh, how can we uh, how yes. can we make this prediction that's why i put this in the future work yeah it's a good insight i would like to say that yeah thank you by my side yeah yeah do i do you have any question Okay. Not a question, just the the matrices were wrong, not only because of the outliers, uh, but also when you <coughs> uh, do the um, whole encoding or the encoding in general to bad and good, um, have you checked the number of uh, data for bad and data for good? Because if those numbers are not equal, uh in your model uh, i mean for the, the training and testing that that would give us a uh, wrong metrics that uh, that would be the mm -hmm. problem also uh, and also mm -hmm. didn't mention maybe scaling uh, normalizing have you done that those might be also the issue Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have. I have done the the scaling, but for uh, for the whole encoding uh, uh, part, uh, since uh, I use only uh, the RMFS uh, data, uh, those data are all uh, numerical, so I I don't have to convert them into uh, new numerical data. But for for the scaling part, I have I. I have done uh, the the scaling to you know to put them into similar uh, range, but for, for the first part you 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 said, as you see here, uh, only three three data were identified as low risk customers. Uh, most of the the customers are high high risk customers, so this creates imbalanced uh, imbalanced. Uh, you know classes in my uh, data set so when i divide maybe the training and the the, and the test i don't know this may have uh, effect uh, on that so i uh, i think this may be the, the the issue and the reason for for having this uh, three three only uh, only three customers were identified as low risk was i assume that it was uh, due to some outliers because i didn't include uh handle outliers uh, the model thinks uh, you know very high high amount uh, maybe needed to be uh, categorized into uh, low risk uh, customers that's why okay So I think we can go to the next presenter who is willing to make to go next. Thank you, Abra. Anyone? Yeah, that's all maybe. Yeah, that's are you able to speak? No, okay. So, Emilian, I can, you can take over. Emilian, are you there? Uh, I haven't asked another one of you, Junior, Nadia, and Sion, since um, are you, is there anyone of you who can start or who can go next? Yeah, yeah I don't know, like any, um, I had a plan to present this time because I have done okay. all the, I, I mean, I have done all the tasks perfectly, like I don't, I'm having priority right now, so 
Yeah, I think it's. I'm uh, the problem with one percent of battery. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, Junior, you can share your work here, and Nadia, maybe we can. I don't know. It's really appreciated that you're ready to present uh, for today. But I don't know. Maybe we can we can do any sessions like one hour. I mean, five minutes before any other sessions for the next session. Are we okay, Nadia? Yeah, sure. It's okay. If I had a light, I can I can present it uh, anytime. But like, I have one question. I mean, uh, like, uh, will there be any time? I mean, to compensate, I like uh, I have done the. I mean, I have done the tasks. Again, like I didn't submit. Um, the time was over by the time I finished. So, would there be any excuses for us who didn't submit for any other time? I mean, you didn't submit anything, or you haven't submitted everything that you've done. Which one is I that? I have done the exam submission, not the final one. Okay, yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. Maybe not. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just think by the time it's over. Yeah, the submission portal is closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. If you can say something about this. Uh, maybe for the next time, I don't think we have uh, we can do anything since you actually didn't submit, but um, you can actually submit and continue working on it. And by the time uh, it's, it's going to be checked, you also, because we won't check it on Sunday, so you still have time to work on it on Sunday. So you submit on Saturday, let's say, for example, you, you submit a git, you, 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 you branch, right? So you still can work on it you 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 did you like you won't submit a specific commit you just commit you just submit a branch right so which means you can continue working on it so as as long as you are working on it like we will still check it so for the next time just try to submit whatever you have and keep continue working on it it doesn't need to be a complete work while you submit it but since let's say you have time on Sundays and on weekends, so some you work on it on Saturday and whatever you have, you submit it, and also uh, in the meantime, you still keep working on it on Sundays and also on Monday in whatever way uh, you want. But uh, if you just didn't submit and uh, tell us you actually have done the work, there is no way we can check it if you actually hadn't submit anything. It's really hard to manage if we actually uh, go in that route. If you get my idea, an idea. Nadia? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I read it. Yeah, I have listened to Nati. Uh, I will try to manage, as he said, up there now. So yeah, we can make the presentation once we have to in another sessions. Uh, so, okay. So Junior, I can understand that, or can I get the point that you, the evaluation steps and things like that have went well and you were able to evaluate between the, between the models? And you've just uh, run the first, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So the evaluation step went well. Does it mean that, Junior? Okay. Very nice. Okay, so... Um, is there anyone who want to go next or have some suggestions? You want? Anything you want to say about maybe if it is not a presentation or you can mention something about last week's challenge? Okay. So I think we can end the session here, Emilia. Yeah, yes, we're good. Yeah. So you can take over. Uh,
I think I'm having slow network. Can can you guys hear me? We can hear you, Emilia, and I think we can end the session here.